Hello and welcome to our very first live Cub Scouts TV. Uh, tonight we're going to be doing some firsts, so bear with us. Um, I'm going to get everyone to do the opening parade, but it's going to be a little bit different. So hopefully you've got a little bit of space at home. Um, and I'm just going to run through what we'll do and then we'll do it together. So I'll call pack, 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 and you can jog, jog on the spot, but I'd like you to scream out pack as you come in. And then when I'll go uh, pack alert, so you go pack alert, pack at ease. And then when I lower my hands, you'll go down to, you know, with the, to the um, Cub Scout position. And instead of a six of saying uh, Cub Scouts do your best, I'll say um, do your best and you'll, re you'll reply with we will do our best. And of course, when you're um, when you're down in the kneeling position, you'll, you'll call out, ah, K la, we will do our best. Um, and then I'll go and uh, lower the flag and then we'll get started. So, everyone ready to make some noise? Don't be nervous. Uh, hopefully the doors are closed at home and mum and dad aren't going to be too worried. Let's get started then. Pack, pack, pack. Oh, sorry. Uh, scouts alert. Scouts at ease. Do your best. All right, hopefully that worked. All right, standing back up. Excellent, guys. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a game. Now, we're doing a bit of an Easter theme uh, tonight. So uh, I know it's a bit late from Easter, but we had uh, Orthodox Easter was just on the weekend. Um, so tonight we're going to do an, a sort of an Easter themed game. We're going to do some looking at some dyeing some eggs. Um, we're going to sing a uh, sing a song, and then we're going to uh, have a look at a, some camp blanket before we um, finish off. So the first game, hopefully we've got a little bit of space around. It's a bit of an active game. And it's a little bit like Simon says, but we're going to be pretending to be um, bunnies. And so I'm going to ask you to, to hop, and uh, you're going to follow after me. So first of all, we'll just start. To, I want you all to be little Easter bunnies, and you can put you know Easter bunny ears up. But... Um, just, just hop up and down to start off with. So hop, hop, hop. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Stop. Now I want you to hop left and right. So just hop left and right, left and right. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Now hop on your left foot. Hop, 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 hop. How are you going? No one's falling over, I hope. Excellent. Now hop on your right foot. Hop. Now imagine there's a, a line down the middle. I want you to hop over it. Hop, hop. Big hop over, hop, 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 big hop over. Keep going. All right, now I want you to hop around in circles. So hop around in a circle. Keep going. Lots of circles. Keep hopping. Round in circles. All right, now I'm going to get you to hop in directions. So again, remember, if you know directions, we're going to be north towards me, south away from you, uh, east and west. So. Okay, ready? Hop north, hop south, hop east, hop west, hop north, hop south, hop north, hop west. All right, stop. How are you going? Does that, uh, hopefully we've got a little bit of energy out of the system doing that. Um, how? All right, so what um, the next activity that we're going to do is we're going to look at hard um, at, at dying hard boiled eggs. So I've just got a couple of examples here that some of our, um, some of our scouts have done. So um, here's an example of a, a beautiful leg um, that we dyed. Um, firstly, we drew on it with, with crayons and then, um, and then we put it in, into the dye. And, uh, and this beautiful leg here, um, we used some leaves with some nice patterns and we stuck that inside of a sock um, and then we dipped that into the dye and, um, and let it sit there for a while. And when it came out, we had these beautiful patterns, beautiful patterns over it. So there are two examples of, uh, of what we can achieve. Now, I'm not expecting, obviously, you to do that tonight. Um, so I'll just put these down. But uh, this is an activity that you can do. Um, you'll be able to see the video uh, tomorrow or over the weekend. You might want to do this with... Um, the help of your mum and dad. So the first thing that you need to do is actually boil the eggs. And again, 
oh, we end up with just a nice hard boiled egg. So to boil an egg, put an egg into a uh, pot of water um, that's cold, put it on the stove top and let it boil for 10 minutes. And that way it won't or it shouldn't crack um, when it boils. And then after you've um, boiled it for 10 minutes, take it off and just let it cool down. So it'll take about half an hour for the egg to cool down um, because you don't, you know, then you'll be able to pick up the egg easily and, and draw on it and, um, and work with it. So uh, once you've got your cold egg, um, we'll need some other things. So I'm just gonna switch across and show you, I've got some boiling water here, um, what else that we need to do. <clears throat> okay, so the other, the other items that you'll need to do this is you'll need some paper towel, um, you'll need a bowl or a cup. I've got a, a Vegemite jar here, which is, is pretty perfect. Um, you'll need some boiling water, uh, some vinegar, and you'll need some, some food coloring. So I've got some, some boiling water. So first of all, I'm gonna put about a cup of boiling water into my, into my jar. And then I've just got some, some vinegar here. Um, so usually you'd put about one or two teaspoons of uh, vinegar in it. Doesn't need to be any exact science. <clears throat> and then about 10 or 20 drops of uh, food coloring. So I'm going to use some green dye now for this. So you will, oh, okay, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the more, you don't need to put too much food dye in, but the more dye in, the more intense the color will be. And the longer that you leave the egg in this mixture, the, um, the darker it will go. So if I take an egg and I've got some, for the first one I'm going to do, I've got some crayons. Now I've got uh, green dye, so I'm going to use a yellow, a yellow marker. And so with the marker, um, the dye won't, if it's a, um, the dye won't go through the marker into the egg. So we can draw on the egg and because it's a hard boiled egg, um, you shouldn't have any problems with the egg breaking, but, but do be careful that it doesn't, uh, you don't want to crack the egg. And so you can put any design that you want onto the egg um, and just work, work around it. Um, so, you know, you might want to put some, some circles or some, some crazy lines or, you know, a star. I like the, the star on the top of it. Put a few more circles on it. So I'll just, so get creative and you might want to, um, you know, you might want to, on just on a piece of paper, draw your design before you start. So you might say, oh, I want some squiggles and I want a bit of a, a star on the top and might have some circles and some Whatever you'd like, you might even want to write your name on it or put a love heart on it. It could be a gift. And this is something, um, this is one of the activities that you can do as part of your um, handiwork, badge work, which you'll find in your Cub Scout book on, on page 101. Um, so I'm just gonna mix this around. Now I should have a spoon, but I don't. And so I'm just gonna carefully drop the, uh, this egg into, oh, into there like so, and uh, it will start dying. And this is why you need a bit of paper towel. Okay, for the for the second egg that I'm going to uh, going to dye, I've got an old sock, and the sock just allows the dye to run through in through the um, sock um, onto the egg. And here's my egg. But for this one, I've got some some leaves that have got some really nice patterns on them. So what I want to do is I just want to put the leaf against the egg and then put it inside of the sock. So what else do I have here? I've got a few more, a few more leaves. Got a mint leaf here. And you know, if you experiment with different, um, different types of leaves and textures, I think that's quite a nice one. So, oh. 
<clears throat> so I'll put the leaves against the egg like so. Oops. And then I'm going to put that sock over the top. You can do this with a stocking or as well if you have one, ask your mum and dad before you you take their best socks. Okay, I'm just going to tie to a bit of string. Just tie a knot on the top of that to try and secure secure that like so. And I should have just enough space. Oh, just it's going to leak a little bit over, is it? Might need to tip just a little bit of this water out. Watch me make a big mess. Just do a little bit of it in there. There we go. And get the celery again. So I'm not going to have, a, you know, don't have enough, quite enough space in in this um, Vegemite jar for for two eggs. But you'll uh, see the idea. I did. Um, I was going to die. Um, Die a second uh, that that egg a second time and see if I could get the um, get the green on top of the the blue. So you can try various things. Now you can leave you can leave that uh, in there for five minutes, sort of as a minimum. Um, but the idea would be to leave it in as long as possible. You get much deeper and richer colours um, in your mixture. So. Um, Whilst that's uh, soaking in there, let's sing a song. Okay, so for anyone that's from Ninth Brighton, I'm sure you know this song already. It's the darn little chicken egg uh, song. So um, the song repeats. Um, so you should be able to sing it with me. I'll sing the first verse through just so you remember the song. And then I'd like you just to um, you know, follow along at home. So. Hopefully everyone's ready. <clears throat> so I'll just, I'll do the first verse and then we'll start again. So it goes like this. I had a little chicken and it wouldn't lay an egg. So I rubbed hot water up and down its leg. I rubbed hot water up and down its leg. And that darn little chicken laid a hard boiled egg. A hard boiled egg, a hard boiled egg. That darn little egg. So we hopefully you all remember it. So we're going to go through and You'll see we're going to rub some oil, um, some vinegar, we're going to rub a pig, and we're going to rub some chocolate on its legs. So let's start. <clears throat> I had a little chicken and it wouldn't lay an egg, so I rubbed hot water up and down its leg. I rubbed hot water up and down its leg, and that darn little chicken laid a hard boiled egg. A hard boiled egg, a hard boiled egg. That darn little chicken laid a hard boiled egg. I had a little chicken and it wouldn't lay an egg, so I rubbed some oil up and down its leg. I rubbed some oil up and down its leg, and that darn little chicken laid a fried egg. A fried egg, a fried egg, that darn little chicken laid a fried egg. I had a little chicken and it wouldn't lay an egg, so I rubbed some vinegar up and down its leg. I rubbed some vinegar up and down its leg. And that darn little chicken laid a pickled egg. A pickled egg, a pickled egg. The darn little chicken laid a pickled egg. I had a little chicken and it wouldn't lay an egg. So I rubbed some bake, I rubbed a pig up and down its leg. I rubbed a pig up and down its leg. And that darn little chicken laid a bacon and egg. A bacon and egg, a bacon and egg. The darn little chicken laid a bacon and egg. I had a little chicken and it wouldn't lay an egg, so I rubbed hot chocolate up and down its leg. I rubbed hot chocolate up and down its leg, and that darn little chicken laid an Easter egg. An Easter egg, an Easter egg, that darn little chicken laid an Easter egg. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed that. Now, uh, before we go back and have a look and see how the dyed eggs are going, I want to show you my camp blanket. So, um, if you haven't created a camp blanket before, this is my very first camp blanket. 
And so camp blankets are usually made out of a, an old woolen blanket. Um, and, oh, just need to make sure I've got it the right way. I'm just going to quickly run through how you would go about making a blanket. Now these, um, the instructions on this are all on our uh, scoutstv.com.au website, which you'll be able to have a look at after this. But what you want to do is you want to fold the blanket um, in half. And what we need to do is we need to cut a line across um, the side and then one down the middle because that's where your head will come through and this will be the V in that. Um, the line across needs to be about 22 centimetres but again all these details um, are on the website so you don't need to worry about following these. <clears throat> and then the line down the middle is 11 centimetres and that's, that's plenty. Um, another time I'll show you about stitching, stitching all of this, uh, this up. But once you've, um, once you've got that, what we want to do with a camp blanket is that we want to start sewing badges on. So here's a badge that I sewed on that I've, I got. So mine's a, I trained at Gilwell Park. So this was for the training I did to be a, a Cub Scout leader at the start of the year. So I've sewn that on. So what I wanted to show, um, show you tonight is just how you'd go about sewing a badge onto your blanket. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, as we continue on doing our Cub Scout TV is that uh, people might send in any spare badges that you have at home. You might have double ups or badges that um, you haven't sewn on and you're happy to give away and you could post those into, um, post those into us at uh, um, 44 White Street, Brighton, 3186. And um, I can sew those on there and I'll be able to show you the progress of my Cub Scout TV uh, campfire blanket as, um, as I get more uh, badges and, and put those onto the blanket. So let's, um, let's go and have a look at how we'd go about sewing on a, uh, sewing on a badge. One thing to note <clears throat> as we look across here is that with the sock, the water is being drawn up through the sock and leaking onto <clears throat> the paper. So you need to be careful with that. I'm just going to, I've got plenty of a paper towel here. I'm just going to move those across onto the paper towel. I might actually put that in there like so. What you will find is you will get <clears throat> food dye uh, on your hands, but that's okay. It washes out. All right, I don't really want to get a lot of food dye onto my camp blanket. Okay, so obviously one of the first things you'll need apart from your camp blanket is that you'll need a, uh, need a badge. And so here's another badge of mine from Gilwell Park. Uh, you'll need, need some thread. So I've chosen some, some brown thread because my badge uh, lining the around the side of it's brown. Um, so uh, so that you won't see the thread. <clears throat> You'll need some needles. So um, you know, make sure you ask your uh, ask your mum and dad for, for help around this. Um, but uh, if you've never threaded a needle before, it's a little bit tricky. Oh, I can't even get the needle out of the out of the case. But you have a very small hole at the top of the needle, and um, and you'll need to thread that. You should all have excellent eyesight and have no issue um, putting the thread through the through the needle. Unlike me, and once that's through, we will get a very long thread and we want to double this up so and it needs to go all the way around so you need you'll need twice as much as you think you'll need <clears throat> uh, drop that and we just want to put a tie knot in the end of the uh, 
from the end of the thread. And that will stop the thread coming through onto your, on your camp blanket. So I'm going to choose a spot on my blanket. <coughs> go down the bottom here. And I want it to go this way up. <coughs> now, what <coughs> you'll need are some pins as well. So here I've got a, a couple of long pins. And so what we want to do is pin the we'll pin the badge onto the blanket so that it doesn't move around as we're trying to sew it on. So um, my little wombat, I might decide, I might want the wombat on a bit of an angle like that. I think that would look quite nice. And so be very careful when you're putting the needle through that you don't have your finger there when you're poking it through, otherwise you're going to get a needle into your finger. And again, get your mum and dad to help you with this. <coughs> And so I might just put another need, uh, pin through at the top of this. There we go. And so if we're happy with where that is positioned, <coughs> we can then get our needle and thread. And start sewing on. <coughs> so it doesn't really matter, especially with an, an oval badge like this where we start, but we do start from the back. Now, it does take a little bit of um, time to get used to how and where, you know, you, but you'll be able to feel when you poke through the, um, the blanket, you'll feel the, the needle hit into the badge and it'll be a little bit tough. And so you can just pull it through, make sure it's pulled all the way through. And there where we've tied the knot, it's stopped. So now you put the needle and thread all the way through and just work, work your way around. You don't need to, you know, the, the stitch length doesn't matter so much. You don't want it to be too long or too short. If it's too short, you'll be sewing your badges on until midnight. <clears throat> if it's too big, then it it might come loose a little bit. But you just simply continue all the way around. And then once you've finished, and I'll just show you, when you get back to the start and you've sewn it all the way around, put the needle through <clears throat> onto this side. And then you need to create a knot. So you just put the needle through a little bit of the blanket and pull it through. And when you're pulling it through, before it gets all the way through, you put the needle through that loop. And so that creates a little knot there. Just do that two or three times. Uh, just so if it gets, uh, it doesn't come undone. Because if it comes undone, then your badge will start to fall off your camp blanket and you'll need to do that again. So once that's done, just get some scissors and just chop, chop that off. Remember to put your needle back into uh, in with the other needles so they're safe. Um, needles are very dangerous um, if they get um, stuck into you because there's nothing to stop them from from keeping going. So I've always been taught by my mother to be very respectful of, of your needles and then you'll have your match on and so that little bit that I've just sewn on there is quite secure and uh, alright so let's have a look and see what it looks like so remember I do have <clears throat> I do have a couple of pins in here so I do have to be careful with that but then just need to make sure it's the right way around so then the camp blanket goes on like a poncho it goes on like that, and there you can see where my Gilwell Wombat badge will go. So hopefully, over the next couple of months, we'll start seeing lots of badges appearing on my uh, camp blanket. <clears throat> okay, so before we wrap things up, 
um, I just wanted to go back and let's have a look at, uh, at these eggs. So I'm going to get a bit of paper towel, just put it down. Oh, got this one. Now, you usually wouldn't use your fingers because you get dye all over your hands. But I didn't bring a spoon with me. And have a look at that one there. So I can dry that, dry that off. But you can see, hopefully you can see that really well that the, the contrast of the yellow and the green on the eggs has, uh, has come up beautifully. And once that's dried, you can get a little bit of um, vinegar on a, uh, on a bit of paper towel and you can shine that up and the colors will come out even more. Let's have a quick look at this one. It'll be quicker for me to chop that open and see what the, uh, if this has worked. All right, well, there's the mint leaf that was green. So you can see some of the patterns here that hasn't worked, but, and you can see some of the leaf patterns on here. So just, you know, experiment with a, a couple of different uh, techniques. Um, but I think you'll find it's, uh, you know, you get some great results. Okay. Right, so um, just wanted to thank you for, uh, for um, dialing in and uh, watching Cub Scouts TV tonight. Um, each week, we'll be running through a, a similar program. Um, I would like you to put together a, a Scouts box. Um, I'm just, I've got a quite a large sort of Scouts box and inside that I've got some, some rope. If you've got some rope around the house, um, we'll be doing some knots every now and again. Um, I've got some string, scissors, uh, paper and pen. I've got a ruler. I've got some markers and other bits and pieces, just craft items, some A3 and A4 paper, some sticky tape, a hole punch, um, those sort of things. If you can get those um, and sort of craft items and put those into a box, and, uh, and that'll mean each week we've got, uh, when I'm running through activities, you'll be able to follow along with those activities. Um, next week is going to be an Anzac Day um, session, we're going to be baking some Anzac biscuits, so I'll show you how to make them and again you can watch the video and, and maybe bake those on the on the weekend. I don't expect you to bake them as, as uh, alive while we're doing this. Um, and we'll do some things about the uh, national flag and the other flags that we see uh, around Australia as part of Anzac Day. Um, what else? So, um, you can, if you've got, as I said, the the egg dyeing component is part of the Handicraft Level 1 badge. You'll find that on page 101 of the, the Cub Scouts book. Um, so have a look at that. Um, there are other parts to it. Take photos and send those in. Um, we'll give you details of how you can uh, email those details into us. And we'll be able to show those through um, next week, um, your completed work. Um, so I think that is all. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. Again, thank you very much for, uh, for watching. So now we're just going to... Um, oh, didn't put the flag down tonight. <laughs> I'll remember about that next week. Uh, but if we just want to go um, pack alert and pack salute and say good hunting and thank you very much for watching.